In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Owens Corning intake vents on your roof. The inflow vents are a relatively new product. They've been around for about five, 10 years. Owens Corning just came up with their own line. So we've started using it. I think it's a great solution for roofs that don't have an intake. So there's multiple different ways to vent a roof. Uh, you can watch our video on how to properly vent and calculate the venting of your roof uh, to figure out what exactly you do, you do need. Venting is a science. So if you decide you want to use inflow and outflow and intake and exhaust, the inflow vent by Owens Corning is a very good solution, uh, meaning that you don't have to open up damaged walls, do stucco, or make any other structural changes to the actual building and to the walls. If you're working on the roof, all the work can stay on the roof while still getting inflow vents. Uh, this is what they look like. This is a smaller piece. The back of it looks like this. Similar to uh, ridge vents, there will be a slit uh, hole cut in the uh, plywood deck, which will allow air to get in. Um, and into the attic. This mesh protects any bugs, termites, ants, or any other critters from staying out of your attic. These get installed. Um, this is a relatively complicated installation. So there's quite a bit of steps. I would say more than most other accessories on a shingle roof that you have to follow. Now, if you do follow all those steps correctly, it'll definitely work. It'll stay waterproof and do what it's supposed to. However, if you're not comfortable with it, if you think it's too many steps, I don't recommend it. It's better not to do it than do it the wrong way because it can lead to future leaks if not done properly. So we've located where our attic starts. You're gonna to wanna to have to do the same thing on your roof and it's a little bit complicated. Essentially, first off, you wanna find out where your attic insulation stops. That way you know, okay, you wanna start venting from there. You wanna vent as low as possible in your attic, but be past the point of your installation to make sure you have proper airflow. When you install this, it's gonna be five inches, actually five to six inches above this line right here. So we've measured, determined that our attic starts right around here, for example. So we're ready to start this inflow vent. If you're right on the border, you can always go one shingle up, then start the same process. And the way we're gonna install shingles is totally different. I definitely recommend if you're looking to install these inflow vents, uh, either consult with a roofer, make sure you read the manufacturer specifications because it's totally different than the regular installation. We're not gonna nail on this nail strip here and I'll show you how. So we're actually gonna start by installing nails up here and I'll show you why shortly. This is something that you'll generally never do, only in this scenario is an exception. Now that we nailed that here at the top, what we want to do is mark our lines for our secondary nail strip. So our next step is to mark out a chalk line four and a half inches from the bottom of your shingle. It's very important that it's exactly four and a half because we're going to be cutting literally half an inch on top of that. So we'll mark one spot here at four and a half, then go to our other end of the roof and mark four and a half inches there. When laying out your inflow vents, you wanna make sure that your spacing is correct. So from any hips, valleys, or rakes, you wanna come in a foot and a half. That's where your inflow vent's gonna start, but your cuts actually gonna start six inches past from there. So it's two feet actually from any obstruction is where your cut's gonna start. Let's mark out our chalk line and we'll start nailing. So we've got our chalk line marked right now. Again, at four and a half inches from the bottom of the shingle, we're gonna start nailing the shingle down. Again, we're not gonna be nailing on the nail strip. We're gonna be nailing on this chalk line and we're gonna use the same pattern, one on each end and two 12 inches in. One thing I did forget to mention is you wanna start halfway through a shingle. You don't wanna start at the end. You wanna be in the middle of the shingle. So we're gonna put one nail here, one nail at the end and one nail at the middle. Now we come to a full shingle. Again, we're going to put one nail at the end, one at each end, then space the same way, 12 inches. So we've got our shingles nailed down. Now anything past this line, we can start using our regular nailing pattern. So we've got our chalk line, but we're going to be nailing again, same as we usually do, one at each end, 
Now we don't want to get too close to here, so we're going to keep this right at about 10 to 12 inches. And we'll come here at our hip and install it here. So now that we've got our shingles nice and secured, we're going to chalk another line and that's going to tell us where to cut our shingles and where to cut our plywood. So the next measurement we have to measure out is where we're actually going to cut our opening. So we want to go one chalk line at five inches and one at six and a half. And that's going to be width of our entire opening. Always make sure to come in six inches from your side, but it's okay to chalk out longer lines than install your vents as needed. So we're going to go one at this end and one at the other end here. So we actually made a mistake here. We marked the line out at six inches. We're going to disregard this. We marked the second line here at six and a half. So this is where we want to come out. From five to six and a half inches, we want to cut this out. And the easiest way to do it is we already have our plywood cut out from a previous demonstration. But the easiest way is to actually cut the shingle, underlayment, and plywood all in one shot using a skill saw. As I mentioned before, safety is always important and generally you want to wear safety goggles anytime you're using a nail gun or a skill saw. But especially when cutting through these shingles, safety goggles become very important because what happens is these granules actually just start flying out and act like little pellets flying all over the place. So always wear your safety glasses when cutting your shingles. Now that we've got our strip cut, we're going to start removing this material. Generally, you would have plywood installed in these areas. We already had our plywood removed, so you're going to be removing your plywood and your roofing material as well. And you can actually see here, in our mock roof, this is where our attic starts. So this is a perfect location. You're going to have your attic intake from right here. If we were to cut this a little bit lower, we wouldn't be in our attic space and that would be completely useless. But this is a perfect location for intake. So we've got this cut already, we've got this opening done. We need to start install, installing our intake vents. So you want to come six inches past this slit right here, past this hole. So from here, we want to come six inches. This lip is meant to catch the bottom of the shingle. Um, you can see there's a notch right here, this groove is going to sit underneath our bottom shingle and we want to come again six inches so that's our mark right there. That's exactly where this vent should be placed. Now Owens Corning gives us these two inch ring shank nails. These are the nails that must be used for this vent right here. They've thought this out, the length of it, the width and the fact that it's a ring shank galvanized nail is what's important, so make sure you use the nails provided with the vents. Let's get going. They have specifically marked locations for the penetrations, for fastening this down. Make sure you follow their markings as it matters for the patterns. So we've installed our first piece here. It's fully nailed in the proper nail holes. And we're gonna be continuing in the same line, our second one here. And you can actually see, they've done a great job with making an indentation here. So this second slides right there. And we have a nice, clean finish right there. And that's what we wanna see. So we've got this lined up, and let's continue installing. All right, now we've come to our rake end here. I want to show you two different ways of uh, terminating the ends. One's going to be a transition from this vent down to the regular slope, and we're going to do it on the other side, on the hip side. Now, if you wanted, you can bring your vent all the way to the rake right here and actually have this side exposed. In order to do that, you want to make sure that your cuts are done on the inside. Similar to your shingles, you want to leave the factory edge on the outside and your uh, field cuts here in the middle. 
In this vent scenario, it's extremely important because the underside of this vent is extremely ugly. You don't want to leave this exposed. So let's cut this here and you can either measure it out or just make markings. These vents can be done with a simple utility knife, the same thing you use to cut your shingles, we can use to cut these vents here. So we've already cut the top, what we want to do is flip it around and cut this fiberglass mesh here. Uh, generally scissors work best for here, but you can also use a utility knife. So you can see our cut end is not perfectly level or perfectly straight, but that's totally fine because it's going to lap here. The important thing is we've got our factory finish ending here. Now that we've installed our intake vents, we're ready to start installing our waterproofing. So we've got our nails properly installed. For this edge right here, when we're transitioning down to the regular field, we actually came up with this detail with Owens Corning. The manufacturer specifications don't call out for a transition piece. But what we want to do is install three layers. Essentially what we're doing is restarting our eave from this point without our drip edge. So we're going to be installing our ice and water shield on top of this. We're going to install our underlayment. Then we're going to install our starter sh shingles. Then we're going to continue with a full piece of shingles. So let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to do is install our ice and water shield. We've cut this down to a 20 inch length just to fit this dormer here, but you can really install a full piece if you'd like. We want to have our factory finish on the bottom. So right here we want to have a 6 to 8 inch lap past this piece. We don't want to come all the way to our end of our shingle as we're going to taper this down. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here shortly. What we want to do is make sure this bottom is perfectly aligned with the start of this vent right here. Then what we're going to do is install a few nails just to help us keep this aligned. Now we want to come to this end and start pulling that adhesive strip off. So again, this is probably a two-person job, just making sure that we stay aligned. But we want to come close to this corner here. Now being that we're going to install a few layers here, we have our ice and water shield, we have our underlayment, we have our starter strip. Each layer we're going to go slightly more tapered. So we'll break that off here, nicely fasten it. Then what you can always do is um, remove these nails and remove this adhesive strip back here. So just like we would during our regular EVE installation, we've got our ice and water shield installed. The next thing we're going to do is install our underlayment on top of that. So we want to come out slightly past this ice and water shield. A few inches past is enough. And again, we want to make sure we're nice and aligned with this line here. So we want to have this past the underlayment past the ice and water shield about two or three inches and taper off. So generally, uh, if this were not a demonstration, we want to make sure that our underlayment gets tucked on underneath our existing underlayment. As again, we want to make sure the bottom layer always goes first and the top layer underneath or on top of that. So for right now, we're not going to worry about that since we're showing you how to install the intake vents. We're just going to be installing our underlayment. If you need help on how to properly install underlayment, you can refer to our video that we have specifically about underlayment installation. Now that we have our ice and water shield in place, We've got our underlayment in. It's time to install our starter shingle prior to installing our regular field shingles. So again, we want to come about two, three inches away from the shingle right here. Make sure you're lined with the top of the vent. And just like any other starter shingle, we want to place five, five nails. Now, anytime you're nailing shingles on top of the intake vent, you want to use the nails provided by Owens Corning. Now 
Now one thing you want to be aware of during this process is that you don't overdrive nails. Since the intake vents are plastic, this nail is a little bit overdriven. I don't know if you can see it here. So that's an overdriven nail. You want to make sure the nails are installed flush. There we go. Now that we've got our starter strip in place, we're ready to start installing shingles. This is going to be the same installation method used on just the regular field with a slight variation. Now we want to start from this joint right here. So over here we'll be installing a new shingle. And over here we'll just have one layer. Then our next row of shingles will come and take away this taper. You are going to have a slight depth vari variation right here. And we're going to get rid of that in the second row of shingles that we install. So you want to come flush with here. We're going to put one nail right here, then align it. So right here we want to also be aligned with the top of this vent right here. Let's install. Let's put one nail right here, a regular nail. Now again, since we're going on top of the intake vent, we're going to be using Owens Corning nails. Again, this is provided in any box of the inflow vents. We've completed installing the inflow vent. Uh, after this point, it's just like installing any other roof. The shingle will get aligned right here with the proper pattern and we'll continue installing. This top layer here is already past the in inflow vent, so we can just use regular nails. This is what it looks like. Now, some people may be concerned about this opening here and how this may cause a leak. Um, in reality, that's why we layered it up and we have this shingle that's going underneath. So if you have water coming in this cavity, and I want to demonstrate this right here, the water actually flows underneath the intake, intake vent and flows out. So you have no concerns. Uh, same thing with the water coming here. You can see the water will flow over the shingles and whatever comes in here is going to flow out. So that's how you install the Owens Corning intake vent. Again, it's a very detailed process as you, I'm sure you noticed. Make sure to look at the manufacturer installation instructions and follow them exactly. Guys, thanks for watching. We've got a lot of other videos on shingle roof installation. If we're missing something, let us know. We'd love to show you how to properly do the things that you want to do. Like, subscribe, and again, if you have any questions, let us know below.